they are look like they have a solid football team and you have to be encouraged with what Frank Be Beamer has done to this team in his three years here and the direction he's taken them. Can they win tonight? I think so. What do they have to do? They have to play solid defense again. On offense, they've got to get some first downs. They've got to control the game, and they've got to be close in the fourth quarter. If they can stay close in the fourth quarter, anything can happen. I think we're going to see a good football game. Clemson, of course, a team with designs on a national championship now. Virginia Tech, they are coming off a real confidence builder. We'll be back with more here at Lane Stadium and join Jack Gregory and Marie Spencer right after we take this time out. Well, we are back at Lane Stadium. Good evening. I'm Jack Gregory along now with Maurice Spencer. And Maurice, we heard just a moment ago at the top of our pregame show, Jim Forrest allude to the fact that we had a 17-17 tie at South Carolina, but we really paid a price at Virginia Tech because the Tech uh, football team has beaten up. Offensively, we took a big toll. Jimmy Bryson and Todd Mead, both of them Lyman were really beaten up, got knee injuries, and it's going to take a while for them to get back. Plus, uh, John Jeffries, you know, a great running back, he's going to be out with, with a knee injury also. But, you know, Jack, in situations like this, I've seen in adverse times, teams have risen to that occasion and feel the plugs and play great football. That is absolutely true. But let me ask you this, because of Jeffries being out of that lineup, Myron Richardson will play, and I got a feeling that the defensive secondary of Clemson is going to be all over him. What does that do to a Will Fuhrer in the schemes of things that a Will Fuhrer likes to throw the football? He's going to have to really open up, but he's going to have to count on Von Hebron to play a great offense to take some of the pressure off of Richardson. But I think, you know, in situations that I've been to, unfortunately, uh, bad times, an offensive receiver has the, the advantage over a defensive back because he can stop his momentum and make cuts where the defensive play, especially on a wet ground like today, can make a cut and be gone. So I think it's be great for him to really try to accentuate it and pass more to Richardson. We have had a lot of rain here today. Right now it's not raining. It could rain at any moment. We've had six inches of rain. Now you were a defensive back for the New Orleans Saints for nine seasons. You know what it's like to play in a field like this. The field is very, very wet. Who, who, does, it, who does that favor? Defensively, all the time, it, it's going to be difficult for the cornerbacks and the safeties to plant when the Richardsons come and make a cut outside or in, and they'll fall on their face usually, or they'll have to hesitate to take what's known as a false step. This will give the receivers and Will time enough to make a great play. I really think the coach should really accentuate on that play and go to receivers as much as possible, especially sometimes a tight end. I think that's a hidden weapon. The last time that, as a matter of fact, the Tech beat Clemson, the tight end has scored the touchdown. So it might be a good thing to go to tonight. Any way you look at it, it's going to be a great football game. We're ready. We'll take you back now to the booth and Jim Forrest. And Maurice, and we'll look forward to it. We'll return with more after these messages from your local stations. This is the Virginia Tech Football Network. This first half kickoff is brought to you by Coors Light. Pure brewed in the Rockies. The silver bullet won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. It's been raining. It's been overcast all day long. We've had a lot of water. At the moment, very, very cloudy and overcast, but the rain is holding off. And we're ready to play football here at Virginia Tech as the fans arriving late continue to file into Lane Stadium, which is going to be upwards of about 45,000 night. The stadium that seats 51,000, and we're ready to go with McKechnie to kick it off for Virginia Tech. Thomas and Henderson are deep, and the ball taken down by Doug Thomas to the outside, and out of bounds he goes at about the 11-yard line. Doug Thomas, who averages 26 yards per kickoff return, and I think you saw right away had a little bit of footing trouble as he stepped back into the end zone and then had trouble getting going out of the end zone. Well, that was a great uh, starter there for Virginia Tech, pinning Clemson down on the 11-yard line, Jim. It's a good way to set the tempo of the game and good position for uh, Virginia Tech's defense. Not real good for Clemson's offense. Virginia Tech, a team that uh, through their first two games has grown with confidence. And you can almost see it when the team took the field tonight. Of course, if you can't get up for a team that's ranked seventh in the country, you can't get up for anyone. So here go the Tigers with McFadden and Allen in the backfield. And they're not going to do anything fancy down here. Inside the 20, they're, they're a conservative group. You get a good... Get a good look at the uh, wide tackle six defense that the Virginia Tech employs. Here's your Clemson offensive line. It's young, it's good. Hank Phillips had a great game last week against Florida State at center, moving in from guard. Chris Morocco takes over this team at quarterback. Terry Allen's as good as they come in the country, and at fullback, McFadden is good too. On second down and eight for Clemson. With a motion man, Morocco the quarterback. Here's Allen the first time to the 15. 
Jimmy Witten, the first man to get to Terry Allen, the 6'3 junior out of Danville, Virginia, makes the stop. Clemson will pound you on the ground. Well, absolutely, they're going to try to establish their, their ground game, but uh, they're in a, this is the kind of situation that Virginia Tech wants to put Clemson in, a passing situation where they're now third and six. And this defensive team has been very good defensive team, learning the wide tackle six the last six games last year, the first couple this year against the rush. Morocco incomplete, going to bring up a punting situation. He was trying to go to Rodney Fletcher down the right side. Good coverage back there by Damian Russell. Well, they got uh, that time a key to that was the first down play. They, they kept uh, Clemson at bay down there, second long, and they got a couple on third down, but they put him in a passing situation deep in their territory, not what Coach Ford wants to be in. Absolutely, does not want to throw down here, and doesn't very often, in fact, inside his own 40-yard line. Virginia Tech very good with the special teams. They lock the block, the punts, and they've got a rush on Gardaki, but he's one of the best in the country. Roger Brown will return it to about the 47-yard line. 39-yard punt for Gardaki and a four-yard return, Ed McDaniel, on the stop for the Clemson Tigers. New position for Roger Brown, who was a safety man defensively, but with John Jeffries out and also with Bo Campbell not returning the punch, Jeff, uh, Roger Brown gets that assignment, and he brings it back four yards. Good field position now for Virginia Tech. Will Fewer, the quarterback. Fox and Hebron in the eye. Fuhrer wants to throw it, slips on the turf, and we'll get back to the line of scrimmage and maybe one more. Well, Joe. Will Fuhrer will look at him. The sophomore from Bellevue, Washington. Left-hander that Danny Ford said he liked in his press conference earlier this week. There's the offensive line, changed a bit with uh, Boat White and Verniel having to go on the right side, and he Von Hebron moving in for Jeffries, a very fine back at that tailback slot for Virginia Tech. Second down and 10. That's Fox, the fullback, straight ahead for about five. Five to six yards, just a fullback belly play. Second and long, and it came right at Clemson, right up the middle. Good movement by the offensive front there from Virginia Tech. Otis Moore, the first man to get to him. 276-pound senior out of Augusta, Georgia. In the middle of that defensive front is Bob Bodine, undersized perhaps for a middle guard, but boy, he's flanked by 295 Hammonds, 276 Otis Moore, and the defensive secondary and linebackers as good as they come. Third down and four for Virginia Tech, perhaps the fastest group of linebackers ever for Clemson. Penalty markers down and fewer throws wide and outside. Trying to hit Bennett down the near sideline. Well, you mentioned the speed on this. Uh, so when you talk about the fastest linebackers in the history of school, I can never remember them having linebackers down there that, that weren't extremely fast. And they're fast on the entire front. Bodine may be a little undersized, like you mentioned. He follows a great legacy of middle guards, a different type people. Of course, uh, uh, Perry and then uh, Mark Drag, who started down there for three years, and now Bodine, but he can really move. Don Safford heads the official crew for tonight's game, and the penalty decline. Virginia Tech put into a putting situation now. In the first quarter, 12-14 to go. Basha to punt. Had a good week last week against South Carolina. Angles this one toward the sideline, and... Bounces into the end zone, so they'll bring it out to the 20. Good try to go to the corner by Boscia. 45-yard punt. Well, good roll for Clemson, a tough break for Tech, but uh, it's still field position in Virginia Tech's favor. Those two series, uh, the defense uh, for both teams uh, stood out. Go ahead, Jim. 12.06 to play here in the first quarter. We'll return with more into these messages from your local stations. This is the Virginia Tech Football Network. Good one, up the middle, up to about the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. Well, we have a third and six. This is not what Clemson wants. They want those five, six-yard gainers on first down to come in short yardage situations. Now they're in a semi-passing situation. I want to make one comment. There's two different distinct defensive styles here tonight, and our camera works perfect. You can see the defensive line. We've talked about the wide tackle six of Virginia Tech. It's an even defense. The center's not covered. You get a good look at it here. When Clemson's on defense, you can see Bodine over the middle guard, over the center. 
Tigers have third down and six, one running back, and Morocco's got to look to throw it. Throws it well, can't hold on to it. He had Fletcher between the numbers. He couldn't hold on to it. Good, that was an excellent play coverage. by Damian Russell. Here's a look from behind Morocco. Now, Russell's coming from a safety position. He reads the quarterback eyes. He's a center fielder. He came up very aggressively and made that play, splitting from the ball. It's a great play by Russell. Here's Gardaki, averaging nearly 45 yards per punt. Gets this one away. And now it's Myron Richardson back at his 33, having some trouble with the footing and dances across the 35-yard line. But that's about all. Gardaki gets good hang time on the punt, gets his lineman an opportunity to get down on the coverage 43 yard kick that time with a three yard return on it kenzel jackson the first man to get to him for the tigers myron richardson a receiver and because of bo campbell's injury he's having to field the punts too well he has to do a lot today but uh, sometimes you've just got to come up with a little bit extra and he's going to be on the field a lot and i'm sure he'll rise the occasion you can see the odd defense now of clemson with bodine on the center Will Fuhr, the quarterback, out of the eye. Hebron, not a chance. What a great play by Vance Hammond, the right tackle. Well, Hammond, I don't believe, was blocked on that series. It was a misdirection, a, uh, a counter, and it was a little slow in development. He read it quick and, uh, and came in free and made the hit for a, for a five-yard loss. Now they call it four. We'll make it second down for Tech with a ways to go. About 14 yards to go. There's Vance Hammond. Hammond, 6'7", 295. The tallest defensive lineman ever recruited by Danny Ford. Fewer over the middle screen. Got his man, the call. Across the 40. Gets a block to the 46-yard line. Jim, that was the second choice. They had the screen set up on the outside. Clemson read it real well, and he came off to McCall on the choice route. Watch Fear look for the screen. He sees it's covered. Beautiful job by Fear of picking his receiver out, and a great job of, uh, by McCall. That was set up to be a screen, and, and McCall was his outlet. Great open field tackle, too, by James Lott. They say he's as good as they come in the open field. He's high on the National Football League draft list. Pick up a 14, which will make it very close here for a hokey first down. The ball out at about the 45-yard line, just across and maybe inches short. Well, you can see, inches short. You called it. Maybe an inch short, Jim. <laughs> Let's... Well, this is where Clemson is so difficult, too, to run against. They've got those big guys up front, the quickness along the line, and those linebackers do such a, a good job of stacking it up in there that even an inch against Clemson is tough to get. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I think they're going to get it. They'll go right at him. Will Fuhr has really matured as a quarterback. Perhaps a year ago, he wouldn't have been able to make that play. He had a rough start. Of course, he opened at Death Valley down in Clemson his college career, and that's tough for anybody. Well, his, his football's ahead of him. Steve Marshall, offensive coordinator, was talking to him. He, he really believes strongly in this young man. We'll talk more about that later. Oh, my goodness, on third and short, they're looking to throw it. Throws it by McCall out of about the 49-yard line. I don't know where that was possession. I think it surprised us, obviously. It's a, I, I tried to make the play call and say they run right at him, but uh, maybe they'll go for it here in fourth down, and he was looking for a, a big gainer there on third. Arlington Nunn was the Tiger on coverage, and is that a gutsy call by Frank Beamer? He had it decided all the time he was going to go for fourth down it, if they didn't complete the pass, it, try a little trickery early. Exactly. Maybe a Ruski here in Blacksburg. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Exactly. He had it. He knew he was going to go for it fourth down. That's why he took the chance on third. Full house backfield for Fuhr. And now Hebron's got to go in motion. And they get the first down. Smart play by a freshman, however. Vaughn Hebron, the freshman out of Baltimore, started forward, and he knew he was out of luck at that point. He had to continue lateral movement or they would have thrown the flag on him. You're right. Exactly right. That was a real heads-up maneuver on the young man and uh, here he might have opened it up a little bit oh watch the block there by the uh, Pavlik. Left, uh, right exactly skip Pavlik uh, number 79 the, the left guard excellent job 6'3 285 pounder from Virginia Beach give him three on the play attack first down at their own 48 
misdirection. Here's Fuel. It's going to be tough to get outside on these guys, and Fuel gets maybe five before Lott hauls him down, but not bad. Well, they're mixing it up good. I mean, that's just a, what's called a naked boot. I mean, there's no blockers out there in front of him. They're just relying on, uh, on deception. But uh, I think it's a good first ten, 10 play call here. We're going to take a look at it again. You can see the entire, you can catch the entire offensive line starting to come down to uh, the left of uh, Virginia Tech, and Fear just takes it by himself. Shows good speed because, as we mentioned, Clemson can run. There's a picture of James Lott. This is his fourth year as a starter. Boy, is he a good one. Second down and four here for the Hokies. They try Fox, but boy, to a linebacker fill that hole real quickly. See the first man. Oh, that's Vincent Taylor. Vince Taylor, 5'11", 228 senior. He's out of Clearwater, Florida. He's won the game ball the last two games, which means he's a Clemson captain for those two games for exceptional play against Furman and last week against Florida State. Well, here's the young man's paid his dues. I mean, this is his first year as a full-time starter as a senior, and he's making the most of it. Another uh, outstanding uh, linebacker in Clemson's tradition. No gain in the play. Third and four. The one setback and fewer to throw. Comes pressure from the outside. He's got a man. Richardson out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Byron Richardson run out by Jerome Henderson. Well, we've talked about earlier about the importance of uh, Tech's offense making first downs, and that's a big one on third and four. That's their second first down on this series. 16-yard pickup on this, but Fuhr is so calm, and watch the pressure from the outside. Well, he picks up Richardson as the inside receiver, breaking to the outside, and uh, has plenty of time to make his move, and he was open, but you're right, it was uh, Fuhr that delivered that ball under pressure, going to his left. Doug Brewster was the man putting the heat on for the Tigers, first down at the 30, and we've got a flag on the play, and we'll stop this one. Pretty good-looking drive here for Virginia Tech against a very fine defensive team, and they have mixed it up, and we're going to have a procedure call here on Virginia Tech. That'll cost them five. Well, they got the two first downs, and they're making use of the field position, but now they're first and 15, but they're still there in four-down zone. Not quite in field, out, field goal range. There's a good picture of Coach Ford on the sideline squat. Now, he'll, he'll be on one knee, Jim, before the game's over, but I... I Never understood whether he, what he sees down from that low, but he always likes to get in that uh, either a kneeling or squatting position. Ranks fourth among the active coaches is Danny Ford. What a record he's had with the Clemson Tigers. Coached here for three years as an assistant coach at Virginia Tech. First and 15 after that penalty. And we've got a ball loose. Hepburn picks it up, and down he goes at about the 41-yard line. Another heads-up play by Hebron. Turned in what would... Could have been a disaster there on this drive, but uh, now they're going to find themselves second and 20. All of a sudden, the Hokies going the wrong way, and it's unforced errors at this point. That's what Von Hebron has done this year. He's just a true freshman out of Baltimore, where in his senior year, last year, rushed for 1,700 yards plus and scored 33 touchdowns, scored over 60 touchdowns in his high school career. Well, he's small, but he's tough. I'm impressed how tough that young man is. Something here that Will Fuhrer doesn't like, and he wants to take a timeout with 8.09 to play here in our first quarter of play. 8.09 to play in the first quarter. We are scoreless from Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, and we'll be back right after this. We're scoreless in the first quarter with 8.09 to go. Right now, let's go down to the field for this All-State sideline update with Marie Spencer. Jim, tough break for the Tech secondary. Roger Brown, the right corner, has been out with a knee injury right now. Dr. Langdon, the team physician, is to set it in a wait-and-see mode and see how it settles down and see if everything's okay, and then he might come back. Right now, he's in a wait-and-see mode. Tough break for Tech. Back to you, Jim. Okay, Maurice, thank you very much. Indeed, that is a difficult break for Tech, already hurt by injuries coming into this game, losing Jeffries and losing Meade and losing Bryson along the front, losing Campbell back there. And now the leader of their secondary, Roger Brown, is on the bench with a knee injury. But it's up to the offense to hold on. They try to get outside with Hebron. That is tough. LeVon Kirkman runs him down from behind, and Hebron crosses the 40, maybe to the 39-yard line. Gets a couple on the play, but Kirkman, the sophomore out of Lamar, South Carolina, 
got to him first. And that's the thing that's tough to do, Tommy, against this team is turn it to the outside. Well, Kirkland, that way, he, that time he feathered the quarterback, waited for the pitch, and then broke on the pitch man, and he showed a lot of speed there. He's the rush defensive end, whereas they call Johnson on the other side the bandit, and he's usually in coverage. This is a third down in a long way. 19 to go for Tech and Will Fuhrer, the quarterback. Third down. The ball at the 39-yard line, Clemson territory. Fuhrer with time, delivers it to Richardson, and then down he goes. That was Lamar Smith, excuse me, out of the backfield. Lamar Smith dropped the ball. I think they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Now well, let's see. Now they're going to call it a fumble. A break for the Tigers. They call it a fumble. And Lamar Smith losing the handle of the football as he started to turn it upfield. And the Tigers are going to have their best field position of the first quarter. Yeah, I was uh, thinking just that when they initially called it incomplete. I was well, at least you know they're, they're going to punt it here, but they'll punt Clemson back in the hole. Now Clemson's still in their own territory, but it's a whole lot different than how you can run your offense when you're on the 33 as opposed to inside the 20. Two tight ends for Clemson. And McFadden will get the football. Cross the 35 to maybe the 37, 38-yard line. Damian Russell up from a safety position to make the hit. Russell's playing extremely aggressive, and, and that makes it a nine-man front when you have a safety that active because nine people on the rush. In other words, they're going to try to stop Clemson's running game first. I mean, that's uh, Mike Clark, defensive coordinator's game plan. Give him four, second and six. Greg Lassiter in playing that right cornerback slot now for Roger Brown. Perry Allen. Maybe enough for the first down. Brian Campbell holding on for the Hokies. That's the first time we've seen the, the pitch sweep, and that's Clemson's bread and butter with Allen, and it uh, picked up five or six yards. I'm, and we'll probably see that play 15 to 20 times in the course of the ball game. Well, he gets seven on the play and a Clemson first down. Terry Allen has never been held to under 50 yards rushing in his career. And he is moving rapidly up the Clemson career rushing ladder. Out of the eye, McFadden gets it up the middle across the 45 near midfield before he goes down. Damian Russell. And now the defensive backfield having to make some stops for well, more Hokies. This is what Clemson wants to do. They want to get uh, that big first down uh, gainer. Now they're in a great position, second and five. They can do a lot of things, play action, pass, option. Their whole playbook's available to them. Danny Ford looks on, his team now with good field position as they near midfield at the 49-yard line. Second and five, Tigers. Up the middle, they try again with McFadden, the ball carrier, but he runs into resistance immediately. Leslie Bailey, the first man to get to him, the 5'10 senior out of Hampton, Virginia, filling it up from his right linebacker position, and he got very little, maybe a yard for McFadden. It'll be third down. Here's a look from the end zone. You can see the linebacker stepping up there very aggressively and making the play. Bailey making the first hit. Good job by both backers. Big third down for the Tigers. Third and four. Morocco on the option. Not much there, and they're not going to get it. Just across midfield. And the right defensive side of the Virginia Tech defensive line does the job. First man, Brian Campbell, off the bottom of the stack. Witten was there as well. These guys have played well up front for Tech. Well, that was excellent. Excellent two plays there, two play series. Again, we talk about Clemson being second five, and Tech just shut him down, and now Clemson's going to punt. And Gardaki is going to have to punt for the third time here in the first quarter. The 6-2 sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, averaging 45 yards per punt. Had two this year over 50, and really rockets this one way up in the air. Richardson calls slides a little bit and makes the catch at about the 17-yard line. 35-yard punt, but very effective, Tommy, because it's inside the 20-yard line. With 4.19 to play in our first quarter, we're scoreless here at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, and we'll be back with more right after this timeout. Ball. It's Wayne Simmons who last week against Florida State made a big interception and 73-yard return 
for a touchdown that broke the back of the Seminoles, makes a big play in the first quarter of this one. Two consecutive turnovers now for Tech, and the one thing they knew they had to do is protect the football. Well, this one's obviously a lot more critical because of field position. In other words, Simmons is your bandit position. Another big play folds in behind the line like a linebacker. Now it's tough to defend Clemson. That's McLaughlin, or rather McFadden, over the top, gets a couple for the Tigers. They're going to McFadden a, a, a tremendous amount, a lot more than they've gone to, to him in the first couple ball games. I think they're trying to establish it, the option. We haven't seen that much of the sweep. McFadden, incidentally, was a tailback up here two years ago and, and rushed for uh, over 200 yards. They also have Joe Henderson in at tailback now as Allen is out. Joe Henderson, a 5'9 senior out of Freehold, New Jersey. And now Jimmy Witten comes limping off the sideline for Virginia Tech. And what a loss that would be. He has been a very consistent defensive end. But he's hobbled to the sideline as the injuries continue to mount for the Hokies. Second down nine. That's Henderson across the 20-yard line to about the 18 out of his tailback slot. And Damian Russell up from his safety position to make the stop. I'm just going to mention, Jim, that was Russell again, that ninth guy. is impossible block on that sweep, and he's been very aggressive. Now look for Clemson at some point to try to take advantage of that with the, a post route or something over the middle. But he is being very aggressive from a safety position on the run, making tackles on or near the line of scrimmage. There's a good look at Joe Henderson on a third and four here for the Tigers. Morocco. That's Henderson. Very close to the first down. Had to get the ball to about the 14-yard line. He may be almost a yard short when they finally place it. But he had a big hole up the middle that time. And Bobby Martin from his right linebacker slot, the 6'2 senior from Martinsville, Virginia, up to make the hit. Third down and one, and Morocco's going to want to take a timeout and go over to confer with Coach Danny Ford. No mistakes here. Actually, a little bit less than a yard for the Clemson Tigers. 2.01 to play here in the first quarter of action. We're still scoreless at Lane Stadium. And we're going to return with more right after these messages from your local stations. This is the Virginia Tech. Jim Forrest, Tom Lansiddle back here at Lane Stadium. Big play coming up for Clemson Tigers, fourth and one. Whitten's got a knee problem, we understand. Have to wait anymore. The doctors are taking a look at him now. On the pitch, oh, over the official and into the end zone for the touchdown. That was a beautifully executed uh, triple option play or option play. Totally caught. A deception was there. Caught everybody by surprise. Faked to McFadden and uh, pulled the ball. Pitched to Allen. Beautiful play by Clemson. Couldn't have been done better. And what a job he did. The biggest obstacle to the goal line for him was the official on that side. And he handled that very well. I thought the official handled himself very well, too. Showed a lot of agility. Gardaki to attempt the extra point. He's perfect on the year. Out of the hold of Chris Morocco. He's eight for eight on the season and with 155 to play here in the first quarter. The Clemson Tigers have jumped out in front of the Hokies of Virginia Tech by a score of seven to nothing as they take advantage of a Hokie turnover. Well, I, I, absolutely, that was the turnover is what turned it. We're, we're getting great play out of Virginia Tech defense. I mean, great play out of Virginia Tech defense, but we, they can't uh, take, you know, Get, take the field in that position. We're going to take a look at the touchdown here. You're going to see the, the fake it to Mc, You don't see the Mc, fake to McFadden, but here's the official. Uh, nice jump by, by Allen, and he heads for the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. That young man can really do it. Some kind of player is Terry Allen. Racking up the yards. Needed 620 coming into the game tonight to move into the number one spot all time at Clemson. He is just a junior.
Also, now he has scored at least one TD in seven straight games. There's a look at the young man. Well, Tech's got to uh, get, they're going to get their offense back on the field. Hopefully with the return team, they can get a uh, decent field position outside the 20 and the 30-yard line area. And they've got to establish themselves. They've moved the ball well tonight. Uh, three or four first downs here in the early gone in the first quarter. They need to get some first downs here. They need to reestablish field position. Do not let Clemson get the upper hand, get momentum, and put a couple more quick scores on the board. One thing you've got to do is take care of that pigskin. Though. Kubu, number six, John Kubu, junior out of Anderson, South Carolina, set to kick it off. Drills this one back to Marcus Michael. He'll take it at the center. Good oh, ball. ball up the middle. He can go. One man to beat. That's the kicker, and he doesn't. Out at the 45-yard line. That was one area that Danny Ford was concerned about was kick coverage coming off of last week. The only thing he could find, and now he faces a 39-yard return by Michael. Nobody from Clemson took this wedge on. There was no penetration in the middle. You can see it's uh, wide open. There's a little bit good block here on 41, but uh, he, he was up before he was even touched. He was up at least beyond the 25. Excellent execution by Tech, and now they got the field position we talked about. Their offense can go to work. 179-pound sophomore is Marcus Michael. At the 44-yard line for the Hokies. Minute 46 to play in the first quarter. 7-0, Clemson, they just went on the board. Fuhrer, that is man. Nice job by Will Fuhrer to look off the right and come back to Von Hebron out at about the 47-yard line. I'm impressed with Fuhrer. I mean, this is his second full year. You know, he played very little quarterback. I don't believe he played any in high school in about three games at Fork Union. Started the Clemson game last year. The young man has got his football ahead of him. He looks better and better. Took him four plays to go to 24 yards, and Allen's 15-yard touchdown covered it. Second down and five. Hokies will go out of the eye. That was intended for Richardson. Just a little bit behind him as he started to lose his footing, but fewer on the rollout. What he does with that, Tommy, is buy some time. Well, that time, he the first play, he checked off the pass. He checked that time and ran an audible. I don't know what he's seeing in the Clemson defense. They were in what's called a two-deep look, but he checked that, but it looked like there was a little confusion, uh, and everybody didn't get the auto automatic and uh, weren't, weren't in their pattern correctly. Third down, five, Hokies, ball at the 48-yard line. They look outside, that's Hebron, looks for some blocks. Got him, Hebron can fly, he can fly, he needs one block. Tries to get it from Fox and ran right into it. Didn't give Fox an opportunity to throw the block for him. <laughs> this crowd excited about that youngster. That's an electric situation. Jerome Henderson was the last man that could get him, and he did from his left quarterback slot. Really well done. 27 yards for Von Hebron. Here's a look. Watch him follow his blocks out here. I thought Clemson had a court covered. They kicked the, the, there's two blocks to kick Clemson defenders out. He cuts back inside, breaks the tackle, almost goes all the way here. Very fine defensive play up. Well done. He tried to get a block from Fox, and he couldn't give it to him. We're back live. Fuhrer looking deep for Richardson, and a good job defensively over there by Jerome Henderson. They played volleyball with it for just a moment, but Henderson did a good job coverage on Richardson, who was the big play man for the Hokies. But he was open for a moment, but Henderson really got over quickly. Well, that's two big plays in a row for Henderson because he made the tackle. He made the touchdown-saving tackle on the last play. 19 seconds to play in our first quarter. Tech at the 24 with second and 10. Fewer. A lot of points. Oh, nice fake. Got his man. Fox out of the backfield. Not a first down, but about maybe four on the play. I really like the way, Jim, that uh, Steve Marshall and Virginia Tech are mixing their plays up here. And we've got a marker down back at about the seven-yard line. This could be interference either way. 
And here's a look. Personal foul. Virginia Tech. Boy, and that'll give you a gray hair, won't it? Oh, that's that's going to make them. If that was after the whistle, they're going to lose the down also. In other words, it was. So we won't see it. I don't know what it was entailed, but boy, it's a, a real shame. Nice catch by Fox, who's a fullback. Big loss for the Hokies. You know, really, in the first quarter, Tom, they have stopped themselves. It was after the whistle. What I mean by that, it was, in other words, after the play it was, was over, and then third down became then uh, uh, the personal foul occurred, so it's, it's now third down. And about 19. And with that, the clock expires, ending the first quarter of play here at Lane Stadium. It's been a good one, the first 15 minutes of this one. The Clemson Tigers take advantage of a tech fumble and an Allen touchdown to go up by a score of 7 to nothing. We'll be back with more right after this timeout. Jim Forrest, Tom Lansiddle back here at Lane Stadium on the campus at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, Virginia. 7-0 the Clemson Tigers, 7th ranked nationally. Virginia Tech with the ball, big third down. Very close first quarter right there. Rushing yards, however, only 16 for Virginia Tech, and that'll be tough all night. Fewer under pressure. Hebron needs a block, gets to the 30-yard line, and that's all. Vince Taylor, the man to bring him down. Also, Dexter Davis is over there on the stop from his right cornerback position, gets just a couple. Now it's decision time. Taylor smelled that screen out from the inside. You could just see him fly to the ball from the outside. And that, here's one of the example of those two linebackers and how they can run. This is first year as a starter like we talked about earlier. He is a senior. He's played his paid his dues. He had a great game against Virginia Tech last year at Clemson. He had seven tackles in that game. And it's bringing up a fourth down and decision time now for Virginia Tech as Will Fewer wants to take time out. There you take a look at the sophomore over along the sideline to talk to the coaching staff and Coach Frank Beamer. Well, this will be an interesting decision. I, I, you know, Obviously, they're not going to punt it. Uh, it's either field goal or go for it in fourth and long, whether they feel like they can you know, have any consistency with the field goal. With a new rule this year, you've got to kick off the grass, be a 47-yarder. Uh, the wind doesn't seem to be a factor, but uh, I think he'll go for it, Jim. Not for the field goal. Excuse me, I think he'll go for the first down. There's Coach Danny Ford walking the sideline across the way. Doesn't look like a very happy man, does he? But that's the Danny Ford game face, if you will. And Danny Ford, he, he's done a tremendous, I mean, we all know he's done a great job at Clemson. And, uh, but it was a great program when he got there, but he's added to it now. I think how he's added to it, he's a great recruiter, and he's spread the word. Now they're not only recruiting North, South Carolina, and Georgia, they're getting great players from all over the country. He's 16, 11, and 1. That's a 59% against teams ranked in the top 20 Associated Press. Now well, they've changed their mind, and Thomas is going to go for the field goal. This is Mickey Thomas. He's got it on the way, the straight ahead kicker. Is it enough? Oh, it's wide to the right. He had enough, but it was just wide to the right. A 47 yard attempt for Mickey Thomas. Well, good drive by uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, a good, uh, uh, they threatened. Uh, they moved the ball all through the first quarter like we saw with the statistics. They had 90 some yards here in the first quarter. The only difference this ball game now are two turnovers for Tech and zero for Clemson. Well, they've got to stop self-destructing because on that drive, too, it was a penalty Ready. that uh, really cost them. Morocco, they'll look to throw it. They've got a wide open man. That's Gary Cooper who makes the catch. The flanker, the senior from Ambridge, Pennsylvania, as Darwin Herdman holding on, 18-yard pickup. Cooper's an interesting story in himself. He doesn't catch very many. Well, good, big ones. good first down call. A, a running team throws best on first down because you're looking for the run. They're playing run. It was play action. He rolled out to the right. Man was wide open, very well executed. They're near midfield. Out of the eye. Allen tries to hurt him. Can't beat Randy Cockrell, who's hanging on from his left linebacker spot. 
playing that sweep very well. Cockrell scraped off to the left side, made the hit for about a yard gain or no gain. You know, Gary Cooper, who caught that last pass for 18 yards, is the Clemson career record holder, the yards per reception with 20. But there's a guy that's also got some good figures. Terry Allen has moved up into fourth now, his career rushing at Clemson. That's uh, his total figures up to date. Terry Allen has moved up another notch. Should be number one before it's all over. He's gotten to the outside this time, but got some help across the way because Darwin Herdman was there. The junior from right here in Blacksburg made the stop, and that stop may have kept Allen from going about 50 yards. Well, obviously, Clemson has, feels like they can run the option against this wide tackle six. This was the exact same play they scored on. Of course, it wasn't a fourth and one inch situation, so Tech had the pitch covered. But they are really trying to establish a triple option. Clemson 0 for 4 to this play on third down plays, but they get the first down this time as Morocco keeps it himself and Bobby Martin makes the Virginia Tech stop. And this is a team that's been very proficient this year on third down plays. 12 of 28 coming into this one, 43%, and that's a doggone good percentage. And they make a big one right there well, in Tech territory. Well, Morocco just demonstrated the third, the third phase of the triple option. We've seen McFadden run the ball on the quick hitter. We've seen the pitches to Allen, the one they scored on in just the previous play and then also the quarterback can keep it and turn it up for good yards. He got seven that time, did Morocco. Allen, oh, he's got a hole. He doesn't need much. Chambly. Al Chambly, the junior left end from Virginia Beach, makes the stop, and you're going to give Allen about seven more yards to that record total. Or what soon will be if he stays healthy a record total at Clemson. Well, that time they ran the, the, the toss sweep to uh, the side of Stacy Long and Eric Harmon. That's the two veterans on, uh, on Clemson's offensive line. Clemson scored 64 points this year, 31 of those in the second quarter. And don't forget they scored 21 in the second quarter last year against Virginia Tech. Very good second quarter team, and they get the first down this time. And this time it's McFadden with Bobby Martin holding on. They're winning the point of attack right now. There's two quick first downs, at, well, the third first down after the pass. I think that first down pass got them to midfield, loosened them up, and now they've been able to establish a running, running game in their last four or five plays. Leslie Bailey comes in, and Martin's going to get a breather. Remember Jimmy Witten with a knee problem. Was on the bench, and I think he's back in there now. That's not Witten's side, but that's a good job by Tech and Leslie Bailey, who just came into the game, filled it up from that linebacker slot, and Scott Hill, also from the left tackle slot, got over to help make the stop. Bailey smelled that play uh, and stepped up, made the hit. That's two big tackles he's had today for no gain. Bailey, a 5'10", 212-pound senior out of Hampton, Virginia. Give him a yard, call it second down and nine. Morocco with the eye in behind him. And they've got movement along the line of scrimmage, and it could have been the center, Hank Phillips, who last week graded out 70%, had a great game against Florida State. But I think it was Phillips that made the mistake that time. Well, well, Hank Phillips, his brother played at Clemson, John Phillips, who just graduated, I think, two years ago, two or three years ago. They're from Spruce Pine, North Carolina, up in the mountains there, uh, off of uh, Interstate 40, up in Spruce Pine. Two great ball players, John and Hank. It's second down and 14 now for the Tigers move the ball back to the 33-yard line. McFadden and Allen, and this is McFadden with 30. Scott Hill holds on. He made the initial contact. I know that Frank Beamer has to breathe a bit of a sigh of relief at the fact that he was able to get Jimmy Witten back in there because the attrition rate was really picking up for Virginia Tech. They're still working on Roger Brown down on the bench. And it's got to be a concern, Virginia Tech coaching staff, when you start losing players like they have. Martin's back in, and now Bailey coming out. It's third down and 11 for Clemson, just about in Gardaki range right now. Here's the draw to Allen. Oh, nice move outside. 
He had one man to try to beat to the outside, and he couldn't do it. That was Herdman over there again. From his left cornerback slot, he's playing well on the outside. That was a great tackle by Herdman. Had Allen, had Allen one on one. And you get a chance to see it right here. Here's Allen. Doesn't need much. That little fake to the outside, and then cuts it back. Watch Herdman. Hangs on. I mean, one on one against a great back. Usually, the back's going to win. That time, Herdman made a big, big play. And brings up a fourth and six for Clemson and a 40-yard try here for Chris Gardaki. He's got a lot of range, and he's got this one. That'd been good from 50-plus. Chris Gardaki, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, hits a 40-yard field goal with 9.05 to play here in the second quarter, and the Clemson Tigers go up by 10 by a score of 10 to nothing. We'll be right back to Virginia Tech. Well, they call Chris Gardaki the sophomore punter, field goal kicker for Clemson, one of the best in the nation, certainly among the best as far as punters and field goal kickers together are concerned. He's now four out of five between 40 and 50 yards. It's 10-0 Clemson over Virginia Tech, and we'll now pause 10 seconds to allow them or local stations to identify themselves. WSPA-TV, Spartanburg, Greenville, Asheville. Story developing down on the sidelines, and that's where we'll go for an update for Maurice Spencer. Jim updating Roger Brown's status. The cornerback is, is out for the rest of the game with a knee uh, strain on a particular play and re return a punt the last play. Roger, what happened on a particular play you were injured? It was a punt return, and I was bringing it up to the sideline and ducked under, and I think uh, my leg uh, got cut underneath of me and one of those bad breaks. Tough job. Roger, the last one is going to be replacing him at their other corner position. He's a red shirt freshman. All right, back to you, Jim. Maurice, thank you very much. You lose an awful lot of experience in that senior back there that has really been the glue that's held the secondary together. And that's one area where Virginia Tech really does not have much depth. Greg Lasseter, as Maurice said, is going to have to play back there now. But Roger Brown is done for the game. We hope not too many more. Certainly, Kubu to kick it off. Michael at the seven. Got another slot. Can't get it to the outside. And... Down he goes, up at about the 27-yard line. Lewis on the stop for Clemson. Ten plays, 46 yards, culminating with the Gardaki field goal. They used four minutes and 17 seconds on the clock. We're at 8.59 to play in the second quarter with Clemson leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Gardaki's kid that Paul Zimmerman in a Sports Illustrated article picked as the... All pro kicker of the 90s. Well, the thing about the youngster, uh, talk about a, a, a prospect. I mean, he can do it, do everything. He can punt and kick, and that's pretty unusual because it does use different muscles. Well, Fuhrer has some problems. They were going every which way down there, and that's his third time out as Tech wants to take uh, this one to talk with Frank Beamer and get everybody on the right page. We'll return with more right after these messages from your local stations. This is the Virginia Tech Football Network. That mass of orange means Clemson folks support their football team. About 6,000 of them here tonight. Well, we've got almost a packed house here tonight, and uh, been a real enthusiastic Hokie crowd, too. Hebron in real trouble trying to get to the outside. That's almost like Clemson's defense says, no, sir, this is forbidden land. He's going to lose a couple on the play. John Johnson got there in a hurry. The bandit for Clemson. Give him a loss of one, make it second down and 11. There's the freshman, true freshman, Vaughn Hebron Virgin out of Baltimore. Virginia Tech has three wide receivers out to the left side. Look for uh, Fuhrer to, well, now they have a man in motion, but look for him to roll one way or the other. Oh, what a zip. It goes to Michael. The outside may have the first down and does, I think. This depends on the spot, and it's out to about the 38-yard line. Very, very close. Fuhrer really zipped that one. Dexter Davis got over to make the stop on Michael. Well, they call this a quick hitch pass. You throw it into a soft secondary. They had three quick receivers outside that side. Ran one receiver over in motion, loosened the secondary up a little more, 
and there was nobody there to to, uh, to threaten uh, Michael there at, at, on a, a, immediately, and he had a lot of room to run. It's first down. They'd like to get the ball in the hands of Michael as many times as they can. Here's a ball batted away with pressure on the outside, and it may have been Kirkland that got his hands up to knock the ball away, but there was a penalty marker down. Well, that time uh, the receiver in motion moved upfield too quick before the snap, and uh, it'll be a five-yard penalty. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Clemson takes it or not, but basically Tech is, you know, they're still in this ball game. They're playing, I mean, if they can settle down, they're making a lot of mistakes, yet they're still in the ball game, but they certainly are making some critical errors. Danny Fords decides he wants to decline this one. It'll bring up second down and 10 now for Virginia Tech. 8-11 to play in our second quarter. Clemson with a 10 to nothing lead. Second down and 10 Hokies. Marcus Michael will come wide to the near side of the field. They'll split the backs. Hebron and Fox behind Fuhr. Tough to get outside. Look at the white shirts coming. Look at him coming. Hebron's in deep trouble. One thing you don't want to do is to reverse field on a team like this with that kind of speed. It's just uh, uh, it's going to complicate matters. He ends up losing five or six instead of having a one-yard loss. Arlington Nunn, number 39, you saw him, was the first man. Boy, did he have help from his friends. Look at this. You can see the Clemson team run and react. There's all kinds of white and orange there surrounding Hebron. Hebron was looking for some friends. It's third down and 17. They drop off in coverage and Fuhr throwing it a long way. Trying to get Hebron down at about the 40-yard line. And I'll tell you, Fuhr took a shot that time by the Clemson players coming. It's tough to be put in those long yardage situations against the Tigers. Well, that was the same play that uh, two weeks ago against Akron. They, they hit Jeffries out of the backfield two times. The one he scored on is four receivers up, including the back out of the backfield. Punting situation now for Virginia Tech. A good look at Basha. Squibs it a little bit off the side of his foot, and the ball is going to go out of bounds to cross the way, and the Tigers are going to have pretty good field position at about the 42-yard line after only a 27-yard punt by Chris Basha. 7.07 to play in the second quarter. Clemson holding to a 10-0 lead. We'll be right back. Jim Forrest, Tom Lansettle back with you. Wow. Clemson, 12 rushing yards. I think those are turned around, perhaps. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, little trouble in the backfield. Trying to get that one going, and Morocco never really got out from under center. You knew which way it was going to go. Morocco just wasn't going with him. Well, Clemson's a tough team to come from behind on. Uh, they're a tough team, period. But obviously, I mean, with the ball control type offense, they take time off the clock. Uh, Florida State found that out last week. Uh, yeah, this is a, this a key defensive series for Virginia Tech. Loss of three, second and 13. Here comes that option. They get it outside. Pretty good initial coverage, and then they lost containment. Herdman was the man initially that had him contained, and when he lost containment then on Henderson, well, Chambly had to make the stop. Well, now the, the battle between Herdman and Allen is one and one right now. Herdman made the big play down here on the other end and tackling Allen, but there... That's what, when you get a back one-on-one -on -one as good as Allen uh, against a, a defender, again, he's probably going to win most of the time. Now we got a right. Big difference there. 90 yards to eight in rushing. Clemson over Virginia Tech. It's third down and seven for the Tigers from the 45-yard line. Morocco's got it in the air. Short of the first down at about the 49-yard line. Out on coverage was Sean Lucas as they go out to Gary Cooper on the play. You know, Cooper is interesting. He's there, as we told you earlier, the career record holder in yards per reception at 20 yards per catch. Of his 53 passes coming into this game, only 14 of those had been on the road. And he was shut out last week. He does have two here tonight. That one's short of the first down, make it fourth down and three for the Tigers. And they're going to call Gardaki in to punt it. He'll hit it from about the 40. And really gets it sailing. 
This is Richardson. Had an idea for the fair catch. And I guess they give it to him at the 20-yard line. Well, that was a good defensive series for Virginia Tech. And on that last play by uh, Sean Lucas, there was a nice uh, piece on Lucas in today's program about you know his career at Tech. And uh, he's had some academic troubles, but he's a real fighter and a battler. And he's come back here to play his fifth year doing a great job. They mark the ball at the 19-yard line where the Hokies will go first and 10. Five minutes, nine seconds to play in our first half, and Clemson leads it 10 to nothing. Here's the eye, the fewer looking to throw. Boy, is there pressure on, but he gets his man out at about the 30 or 27 yard line. I think that was Greg Daniels on the reception. Or was it number 18? I believe Give that was Daniels. That's number 85, Greg. Yep. He's a backup tight end, and he's got good quicks. He's got great hands. And the big play, close to first down. We're going to take a look here at Major. If you're, his, you're having, Tech's having trouble running the ball, but boy, is he having a fine day in the passing department. I don't think he's not getting some pressure, too. When he finished up, he was all the way back inside the 10-yard line. This is going to be very, very close look at this one. He's going to be about inches short. So make it second down and a yard to go. Give him nine yards on the pass play. Uh, Halftime, not too far away. Four minutes and 40 seconds now. And some interviews coming up. Hall of Famers, big night here at Virginia Tech last night. Stuart Johnson and Leland Miller will be guests at halftime. Also, we'll take a look at our stats. There's second and one. Oh, they fake the draw. Fewer. In trouble, and down he goes. Oh, what a big play by Wayne Simmons. He's made several of them. And now Tech's got their hands full as they lose back inside the 25. They'll set it at about the 22-yard line. There's the bandit end, Wayne Simmons. Well, that time the bandit end rushed. They had five people rushing for Clemson, rushing the passer. You can see him come in from the bottom of the screen, gets a hold of the jersey. He comes from a, a line that he had a brother played at Clemson several years ago, also played that bandit position. Tough break for Tech, second and short, now they're third and long. There's the red shirt freshman out of Hilton Head, South Carolina. fewer has got some work to do now. They lose seven on the play. There's a blitz. Oh, they come up the middle. That's Fox, and he's going to be short. Going to be short of the first down by about a yard. And it's going to bring in a putting situation. Will Fuhrer is really upset. Well, what I'm sure Tech has second thoughts on now is that's twice now in short yardage situations. Uh, they come off short. There's the Bosher putt, and we've got a flag down. Maybe too many people on the field for the Clemson Tigers. It'll be maybe a, too many. It'll be a five-yard illegal participation, I believe. Now there's two types of. If you have 12 on the field, Jim, I mean, and they're all lined up ready to play, they'll call you 15-yard uh, personal foul. But if it's illegal participation, somebody's trying to get off. Now there's a discussion here. That it'll be a five-yard illegal participation. Well, maybe they'll get it waved off. Also, let's see. Nope, they wave it off. I suppose they can wave it off. Personally, I think it was a penalty. I think he was a good 20 yards on the field. So does Frank Beamer. He's about a good 20 yards on the field right now. Got out his bench, hands on his hips. The fans don't like it. And there's Frank Beamer. He's hot. We need it. <laughs> I don't think he feels fulfilled with the answer that he got. He is still on the field, and Clemson's ready to play. You've got to get back playing right away here. Allen back at tailback, and he comes across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Leslie Bailey is in on the stop, and Allen's going to get about four yards on the play. What a great back he is. Just a junior out of Commerce, Georgia. 
averaging 6.5 yards every time he touches the football this year. 73-yard touchdown run last week against Florida State. Does he hit the hole, huh? Across midfield to about the 49-yard line. Damian Russell for Virginia Tech on the stop. Watch, watch Russell from his uh, safety position. Make this picture tackle on Allen. Right there, he cut. Well, he actually lost, lost his feet, foot, feet there, but kept his head up and got good position on Allen. Big hit, stopped the first down, yes. third short. Well, about two yards to go. Go with the fullback when in doubt. Boy, and they get McFadden to the outside, and he just rode off tacklers up to about the 42-yard line. He's a handful. John Granby was the man that finally got enough hands on to bring him down. A lot of pressure here in Virginia Tech's defense. We talked about in the Prey game about they needed to get some first downs. And those last two offensive series as they came up short both times. Uh, Clock offense we, didn't stay on the field. Clock we have to watch down. We're down to a minute and a half and Clemson's throwing, but wide and outside as they try to go to Gary Cooper down at about the 32-yard line. Morocco went down at the end of that play under pressure. Minute and 28 to play in our first half. Clemson leads 10 to nothing here in Blacksburg. That was that pressure was from Jimmy Whitten, so he seems to be fully healed and uh, he's out there playing hard. Doug Thomas comes in at the flanker position for Clemson. Second down and 10. There's Thomas in motion. Right up the middle they go. Campbell on the stop of McFadden. Out about the 40. Clock continues to tick the minute and 12, 11, 10 seconds in the first half. But the one thing you got to keep in mind, the Clemson Tigers have a guy by the name of Chris Gardaki. They don't need all 40. They need about maybe 15 more to be solidly inside Chris Gardaki's range. Third down, eight. Morocco looks long, overthrows. I don't think Morocco ever got good footing that time. And then it heat right up the middle, coming from Scott Hill, the defensive left tackle who had heat on Morocco, but he had trouble getting out from under center. And I think you can see that what that six inches of rain has done is it feels really slippery, even though it's been covered. Also, Archie Hopkins, the uh, junior outside linebacker from Fort Myers, is putting a lot of pressure on him. He's the oldest kid on this football team, Archie Hopkins, 23 years old. We, these fans are, are really giving a tribute to this uh, Virginia Tech defense. That's three times in, uh, when... Clemson's had an opportunity to break this game open that they've, they've answered the call. Oh, there's no question that they've played it well. Here's Gardaki. He's got big numbers under some pressure, and he's going to launch this one on the fly in and out of the end zone. 40-yard punt for Gardaki, not taking a chance of Virginia Tech returning anything there with 41 seconds to go in the first half. We will return with more after these messages from your local stations. This is the Virginia Tech Football Network. Nighttime football in Blacksburg at Lane Stadium. It hasn't happened much, only the fourth time since the lights have been up in 1982. It's been two years since the last time they played. Here's the draw play to the fullback, Rich Fox, straight up the middle. Comes across to about the 22-yard line. Clock runs, ticking down at 30 seconds to play in our first half. And Tommy, Tex played it very well over the first 30 minutes. Well, that's uh, they've played a suit. We'll talk in about a halftime. But I think they played a super first half, but they're doing the right thing here, Jim. Run the clock out. Had pressure on the defense. You know, do not need to give Clemson the ball here in the, in the last seconds. Give them another shot at it. Let me make a correction. That was not 43 Rich Fox. It was 33 Tony Kennedy. And that's what uh, Fuhrer's going to do right now. He's going to take a look at the clock and say that's enough here in the first half of play. And that's the way that the two teams will be heading to the locker room. Virginia Tech and the number seven nationally ranked Clemson Tigers leading over Virginia Tech by a score of 10 to nothing. And Virginia Tech, well, they just didn't do a very good job of taking care of the football. And that uh, really has uh, 
put them behind here in uh, the first half. I think that the defense has played very, very well to keep them very much in this football game. And we still have another 30 minutes to play. And the one thing they're going to have to do is take care of the football in the second half and then get something going offensively, obviously. Let's go down on the field now to Marie Spencer with the coach. Coach, uh, a lot of mental and physical mistakes in the first half. What's your only down going 10 0 and going in? What do you think? Yeah, and really, uh, you know, we've either stuck ourselves with a penalty uh, or, or something that we've done uh, in the first half. And we get that squared away, I feel like we're right in this thing. Yeah, loss of Roger Brown. What is his status? He'd be hurt. Well, last he's was a great a, player. Yeah, he's got a sprained knee. Lost him on the fire, first punt. Uh, uh, we're having a tough time with our injuries right now, but uh, we got plenty of guys who want to play. Okay, good luck to you, Coach. Thank you. Back to you, Jim. Maurice, thank you very much. It's 10 to nothing at halftime. The seventh ranked Clemson Tigers lead Virginia Tech, and we'll be back with halftime festivities right after this. Clemson leads at halftime by 10 at 10 to nothing. They got the advantage on the scoreboard, and Tom, they've got the, the advantage, really the statistical advantage at halftime would probably point to a 10 to nothing lead for the Clemson Tigers. It, big plays in the first half. Tech got close one time, and it was a big play that did it, and this was it. Well, here's a, a, a swing pass, or actually a screen pass to Von Hebron, the freshman, and you can see how exciting this youngster is going to be. Reads his blocks very well. Two excellent blocks coming from the inside for Tech. That sets this up. He runs through defenders and almost takes this all the way. In fact, uh, he had one man to beat with several blockers out in front of him. There's a touchdown saving tackle from for Clemson's Jerome Henderson there. Uh, but uh, exciting play and uh, by Tech. Here's the touchdown. Uh, the only touchdown of the game for Clemson. That was a, it was a fourth and about two inches. And the only guy out there to make the play was the official. Excellent call by Coach Ford and his staff uh, on that short yardage situation. There's a touchdown for for Clemson. First downs, Clemson 6-4 to four over Virginia Tech. The rushing yardage, really big disparity there. 107 to 10 on 27 offensive plays. Tech better passing, 9 out of 15. Morocco is 2 out of 6 throwing the ball. Actually, total yardage is not that much difference. Well, not, it's 108 to 129, but I think the next stat is one that tells a story. Virginia Tech still on offense, a little inconsistent. Had a couple key penalties, two key turnovers. That in itself right there, when you talk about the statistics telling the story, yeah. Jim, yeah. that tells the story right there. Those last two lines have done it for Virginia Tech. Here's the Clemson possessions now in the first half, and what happened? Punted the first three times. Well, you can see the job that this Tech defense has done. That only touchdown came after a fumble inside the 30. Uh, then after three plays on the fourth and short, they ran the, the option and took it in. Those last two series are, ex are extremely impressive to me because they had good field position. For Virginia Tech, well, you can see what happened. Two fumbles, the missed field goal, the, the uh, of course, the punts. But they moved the ball, and again, that, the big positive for Tech is Will Fuhrer and his ability to throw the ball. Uh, real, looks like he's going to be a very exciting quarterback throughout this year. At halftime, it's 10 to nothing. The Clemson Tigers have the lead over Virginia Tech. And won't be long, and we'll be having the final 30 minutes of football action from right here. A beautiful night as it's turned out for football after about 24 hours of rain under the full moon in Blacksburg, Virginia. We'll return with more after these messages from your local stations. This is the Virginia Tech Football Network. Jim Forrest and Tom Lansiddle back here at Lane Stadium at Virginia Tech with Clemson, seventh ranked nationally, leading the Hokies by a score of 10 to nothing. Third game of the year for the Hokies. They're a win and a tie coming in, as you see the win over Akron and the tie last week with South Carolina. And then after this one tonight, the Temple Owls come to town. That will be next uh, Saturday at noon, and we'll have the game for you on Telesport. Then an open date before the trip to uh, West Virginia, and Major Harris has them rolling again. This is not an easy schedule because then comes Florida State, and then a trip to East Carolina with Tulane and Vanderbilt at home, and then finishing on the road with Virginia and North Carolina State, two teams that could be in the running for the ACC title. That's what's ahead for the Hokies of Virginia Tech, and that is uh, not an easy schedule at all. And the attrition rate 
continues to be something that you know the coach Frank Beamer, Tom, has got to keep his eye on and really wonder about. Yeah, but I think, you know, the development of this program, Jim, in his third year, I mean, you're seeing some kids starting to fill in. You're seeing some maturity, and that's the key. And, uh, you know, injuries happen. They happen to everybody. They sometimes happen in bunches, but he's having some kids very, very capably fill in. At number six, John Kubu will be kicking off won the toss to start the game, deferred to the second half, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. This second half kickoff is brought to you by New Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Cooper's kickoff. Marcus Mike, six-yard line. Up the middle behind that wedge. Clemson played it better this time, and Michael gets across the 25. They attacked the wedge that time. Well, it's an exciting night here in Blacksburg. This crowd is really into this ball game. Beautiful. It had the shot of the full moon. Uh, it's something about a night game, Jim. It, it, it brings something out of you. Well, these folks had to get used to it. They were still coming in five minutes after the cookoff. They had to get the timing down, I guess. Is how do you get here, and how do you handle the traffic at nighttime? 26-yard return on the kickoff. Will Fuhr, the quarterback for the Hokies, had a fine first half against one of the nation's top defensive clubs. Pocket collapses a little bit, overthrown to the outside. He tried to get Hebron out on the outside, and Devon Kirkland was over on coverage at about the 30-yard line. You know, Clemson went through another half of football, Tom, with, without a turnover, and it's something that they have done very, very well. In fact, they, coming into this game, had run 96 straight plays without a turnover. No turnovers against Virginia Tech last year, and only 13 turnovers in their last 15 games. That's how you win football, and that's the difference in this one. Pure throws off his back foot, and what a catch! Oh my goodness, what a catch by Brian McCall, and they're going to wave it off. They're going to wave it off and say he dropped the ball. Well, no argument from McCall, but what an effort. I'd like to see that again on replay. Ask and you shall receive. Must have turned over on it. That's tough from this angle, but I thought he had it even in his hands as he hit the ground. The ground can't shake the ball loose. Well, Frank Beamer's blood pressure is up again. It's second down and 10. So third down, I'm sorry, third down. Two incomplete passes. Nice protection for Fewer. Throws long and outside. And Tries to get his man out there, incomplete to Richardson at about the 45-yard line. Well, Good coverage. Jer's on his back, but the fact of the matter is they had both linebackers were blitz, and they had either six or seven. I couldn't pick it up on the rush, and I thought the backs and offensive line did a good job of picking it up. Gave him time to get the playoff, as well covered by Clemson. Clemson was in man-to-man -man coverage. Chris Spasha. Ooh, scoops this one a little bit. He needs a bounce here. It's going to get a little bit of one inside the 40 and then finally down by Virginia Tech. Well, Clemson, that was a real low kick. You couldn't see from the camera angle, but Clemson had a heck of a wall set up that time, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Lott did get his hands on that ball and get to that wall. 35-yard kick for Bosch, who came in averaging 38 yards per punt. The ball will be, we'll call it, just short of the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Clemson Tigers. They'll send Rodney Fletcher, the wide receiver, out to the left. Two tight ends. And McFadden and Allen in behind Morocco, the quarterback. And they run off right tackle with McFadden. And Sean Lucas, first man to get to it. Clemson staying with their game plan against that wide tackle six. They're working on the dive. The quarterback keep the triple option part of their game. We have now played a minute of our third quarter. Clemson with the lead 10 to nothing. Pick up a four, second down and six. Morocco coming on the option. Tries to turn it in, but a lot of maroon jerseys over there that time. See the first man to get to him. Lassiter's on the bottom of the stack. Remember now, he's playing for Roger Brown, who injured his knee and uh, is out at least for this game. But good job that time by Lassiter leading the pursuit. This is a counter option. The quarterback reverses out and uh, either keeps the ball, he can pitch, but it was well covered by Virginia Tech. There's Lassiter. 
Give him a yard on the play. Call it third down and five here for the Clemson Tigers out of the eye. McFadden's going to be close to the first down. I think he's got it. Jeb Flesh, Bruce Bratton over there on that side, and he may have the first down. What a job this offensive line did for the Clemson Tigers last week. Danny Ford said the first week win over Furman, he worried about him a little bit, but last week could find very little wrong with him. Well, Larry Van, I love this offensive line. Larry Vander Hayden, the offensive line coach, has been there, I think, through Ford's total career, and they, they're, most offensive lines now have evolved to they're real big people and they do a lot of push and a lot of strength. These guys still just fire out. They're very aggressive. They get after it and they uh, do a good job. Oh, here's Allen. He hit the seat in a hurry. You got to tackle him. Almost got away. Did uh, Allen. Witten was holding on over there. Also moving over on the play was uh, Damian Rus Russell. That was a perfect example on the left side. But I, the, the difference is, again, is, you know, Clemson's offensive linemen have a lot of weight forward, and they're run block oriented. And they're, again, real aggressive. They'll come after you. They don't play high. They don't do a lot of push and shove and just rely on strength. They rely on quickness and getting off the ball. That's a trademark of Larry Vanderhaid's offensive line. Give uh, Allen eight in the last play, and about eight more perhaps here for McFadden. Wesley McFadden, the senior out of Chester, South Carolina. Well, Clemson's threatening again. It's going to happen sooner or later. You give that type of field position around midfield, this is the third straight time that they've had it the last two series and a half, and now they've been able to put together a couple of first downs and putting pressure on the Tech defenders. Chris Morocco, who has been flawless, he was really in a quarterback battle with Deshaun Cameron and, of course, Michael Carr as well, but he's won it so far. Allen. Across the 30, steps into about the 28-yard line. Bobby Martin, the first of the Hokies to get over there to make the stop. Here's the toss sweep again. How quick his feet are. Good block on the left side by Stacy Fields. You can see at the top of your screen, number 46, the junior tight end. 12 carries, 63 yards for Terry Allen. Going to get an opportunity for more here, and there'll be hard-earned yards that he gets going right up the middle. Short of the first down, Bobby Martin is there with him again. And then help from friends in the middle. Hill is there as well. It's going to be about third and three for the Tigers, and Allen's going to get a break for nothing else to tie his shoe. Well, that's crowds in this ball game, Jim. Third and three, as you see it. McFadden is so tough, isn't he? He's got the first down inside the 25 to about the 21-yard line. Well, they set him up so well. You know, they mix it up, they pitch the toss sweep, they run the option, uh, the quarterback and the pitch, and that loosens it up a little bit there in the middle, and again, give that offensive line credit. But he's having himself a, a banner day. Carried the ball more than he normally does. Usually blocks. He blocks on the on the pitch sweep. In fact, he led the team last year in knockdowns. One thing Clemson is big on are these knockdowns. Again, that's a trademark of Larry Vanderhaven. You know, they like to get out, get out the ball, knock defenders off their feet. Boy, I'll tell you what. Bobby Martin read that pretty well. He was coming. The ball's loose, but I think Clemson has it back over there. It was first and 10 at the 21. Scott Hill, first man over for Virginia Tech. But Bobby Martin was coming. He read something into that and maybe got in just a little bit too quickly. It's a second and nine, a yard on the play. Well, the impressive thing here is uh, uh, Tech is just physically are, is, are hanging in there with Clemson. Clemson's not wearing them down. They're still swarming and battling out there. 9.30 to play. In our third quarter, 10-0 Clemson. Out of the eye, Allen's back in to dot it. He's going to get the ball. But he's not getting far because Al Shambly made a great play. The 245-pound junior out of Virginia Beach who's having a good year. What a great play by Al Shambly that time. He diagnosed him. When he hits you, you go down. He's the strongest player on the team. He gets his big arms around you. I'll tell Even you. Even a young man like uh, Terry Allen, he's going to go down. Terry Allen does not get in many minus yardage situations. 
He did that time, and it's third and nine. Now they'll split the eye. Single setback behind Morocco is Allen, and Morocco doesn't like what he sees across the line of scrimmage, and he's going to take a timeout. This is nowhere to fool around in the Clemson offense. 8.46 to play in our third quarter. Clemson leads it 10 to nothing. They're on the move, and we'll continue from Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. Well, the seventh-ranked Clemson Tigers brought him out tonight to Lane Stadium, 47,152. That's not capacity. Capacity is 51,000, but given the last 24 hours, that's a nice crowd. This stadium opened in 1965 on October 2nd. Actually, they played here before the stadium was finished. 51,000 is the capacity, as you see. There's the largest crowd. They won't hold that any longer because they've made some revisions here. Don Perry is in charge of uh, facilities here. And now is this a beautiful place to play, but that field's in perfect shape. Go ahead, Jim. It's third down and nine after the timeout. Morocco's looking to throw. Some pressure over the middle. Can't hold on. Well, they had an all-out blitz, safety blitz, and they had the fourth man out of the backfield. He was uncovered. He just couldn't get the ball to him. There's no way you can cover them all in the man-to-man -man situation, and he was open. I was mentioned, we got a key fourth down play. Well, actually, they're going to kick a field goal here, but I was mentioned about this facility. What well, we've had four or five inches of rain here. This field's in beautiful condition. Of course, it was covered, but they do it. Don Perry and his crew do a great job here. Just a little bit slippery. Here's Chris Gardaki, a 37-yard try for Gardaki. He's got it on the way, and it's up, and it is good. Chris Gardaki hits another field goal. He is now 7 out of 8 on the year. He's made two of them tonight. And that's helped the Clemson Tigers to a 13 to nothing lead at 8.36 to play in our second quarter. And we're coming right back. Jim Forrest, Tom Lansettle here at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia, where we have been blessed tonight after some deluge rainfall. Coming down the last 24 hours, about two hours before game time, it stopped and it has not returned. The field was covered in pretty good shape out there. It's a little slippery uh, in spots, but if that's the worst that it gets, I'll tell you, they've done one heck of a job. Will Fuhr getting some instructions now from head coach Frank Beamer along the sidelines. 8.36 to go in the third quarter, and Virginia Tech not out of this by any stretch of the imagination, especially as long as you got a guy like that at quarterback. Danny Ford said earlier this week that he likened him to a blonde kid they had in Maryland a few years ago. That's a heck of a compliment. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, 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 just watching a young man operate, I mean, does a great job. Yep. Watch this man operate. He tries to get some room and gets to about the 25-yard line. Marcus Michael having to pick his way the last five yards. Did you notice, I uh, hope you can see on your screen, that Clemson uh, defender break up that wedge, and that's the key to a middle return. You can't let that wedge work up field uh, untouched, intact. Flag down on the play, or at least appears to be across the way, but maybe they picked it up. So Tech will start at the 25. They'll try to get it outside. Well, there hasn't been much there at all. Hedlund had to work for everything that he could possibly get out there. Otis Moore was over to help direct him out of bounds across the way, and Otis Moore working from a left tackle slot, the 276-pounder, and he can just get the feel of the way that Clemson says, uh-uh, not outside, going to run at us, going to beat us. They don't let you turn the corner. Give him a yard on the play, Vaughn Hebron, and it's second down and nine. Fox, the lone running back, because they'll put Hebron in motion. Oh, nice catch by Hebron. Great pressure on the outside, too, by Jerome Henderson to bring him down at about the 30-yard line. Hebron came across it, so out of his tailback position, he worked up to a setback and came in motion over the left side here. They flooded the sideline, uh, and uh, he ran a quick little seam route, but they pick up about five or six yards. Hebron is 10 of 19 for 102 yards. That was the force catch for Hebron for 39 yards. Thank you, Tony. Flag on the play here. 
Hebron wasn't looking that time, and we may have an interception. Clemson, and we've got a flag on the play. Let's wait and see who this one's going to go against. It looks like the way that Rob Bond, the center, is clapping, that it could go against the Clemson Tigers. But that was one of those volleyball plays, and Clemson really reacts to the ball, and that's the quickness of it. But at that time, Hebron was not looking, and Fuhr let it go. Well, they, they play... They play that zone defense. They're so quick, it shrinks the seams. I mean, they uh, they can react to the ball so quick, it's like you're playing on a smaller field. It's like trying to pass on a basketball court, you know, with those guys. On the <laughs> 7.42 to go here in the third quarter. Right now, let's take a moment and pause 10 seconds to allow our stations to identify themselves. Let's go, guys. WSPA-TV, Spartanburg, Greenville, Asheville. Well, Tom, the call was offside against the Clemson Tigers, and the Virginia Tech folks can breathe a big sigh of relief on that one. So they net a yard on that and make a third down and short. This is real short. They need to convert this play right here. Oh, and they're going to try it on the pitch. This has been tough, but they're going to see. Hepburn's got the first down. Plenty more on the midfield. Surprise. Boy, is that, that was a great call. He got outside. And it shows you what this, this kid is tough. 176 pounds. Watch him run up in there against these uh, Clemson Tigers. Just that little tackle. shake and bake, too, and Jerome Henderson had to make a great stop over there. We saw him uh, catch a pass in traffic over here. Now he's coming the other way. Oh, he got a great block. Two tackles. Excellent block out of his fullback. Yeah, Fox. Fox. That's one of those knockdowns that they talk about, that Clemson loves. Fewer's got time outside. Look at the reaction to the outside. The pass is complete, but great reaction coming from Jeter on the outside, and it's going to be short yardage, if any, on the pass outside to Greg Daniels. One thing about Fuhr is the fact that he's using the entire field. And again, we talked about the quickness of, of uh, Clemson's defenders, but uh, they're going to read that quarterback's eyes, and he's moving his head around very, very well, and it's, it, it's opening up a few things, even though that was a short gainer. Now Dexter Davis is back now, and Jeter's out, but he reacted well. Second down and 10, given no gain on the play. The ball is at midfield. Here they come right up the middle as they attack the center with Cody Kennedy. Across the 45 and close to the 40 and very close to a first down, James Lott sticks his number five jersey up in there and makes the stop. Tech fans are loving it. you got to love the way this football team is playing and hanging in against the nation's number seven football team. They've attacked them well. Well, uh, Kennedy, a uh, uh, Bladesburg, Maryland product, now he was a 13 tailback, of course, with Jeffries out, but he runs hard himself here. He was the most improved uh, uh, football player, and one offensive player in the spring practice. He's a tough kid, too. There's a look at him. Number 33 is a redshirt freshman, Bladesburg, Maryland, and then he considered that Don Hebron is a true freshman from Baltimore. Maurice Spencer has some action down on the field. Let's go get a report, Maurice. Jim, we're down on the sideline with Lester Curlin, who's the head up equipment manager for Virginia Tech football. And it's not all glory down here. You got the mud part of the sidelines that makes it easy. Lester, do you have any, what's the extra precautions you have to take for muddy days like today? Well, we have to have a lot of extra towels. We have an extra set of game balls, usually it's six uh, game balls. And we take tw uh, 12 this time. We also have a cleat cleaner that uh, you can find at golf courses sometimes, a lot of pro teams have them yeah. too, that uh, guys can rub their cleats yeah. on it and it cleans the bottom of their shoes. I see that. Well, you're doing a great job, Les, and let's keep this turf clean already. Jim, back to you, guy. Okay, Maurice. That was Kennedy on the last carry, and he got very little at the 40-yard line. Let's call it second down and 10 for Tech. Will Fuhrer, number two, just a sophomore, 6'3", 196-pounder out of Bellevue, Washington. Gaining more experience all the time, and you can just see it. The confidence that he got. Oh, had a man wide open. Boy, he had Richardson wide open, and he went for the deeper man, Marcus Michael, but Richardson didn't have a white jersey within 10 yards of it. They had a safety blitz, and uh, I don't know what the problem is here. Uh, Fear better be careful. 
I don't know what happened at the end of the play. I didn't see it. But Will Fuhr is very upset, and so is the man on the sideline, Frank Beamer. Well, he's a very dem demonstrative young man. I think he's going to have good leadership qualities. He's a tough kid, take charge youngster. But that time, uh, the reason the man was wide open is uh, looked like Lott from a safety position was actually blitzing, and uh, they, they didn't pick the receiver up in any type of man coverage. Big third and ten now for the Hokies. Well, he just needed a little bit of a seam, and he couldn't get it. Lost his footing a little bit, but there was pretty good coverage out there by Henderson. That was the First second thing. time we've seen that hitch pass. Jerome Henderson had the initial coverage. John Johnson, the bandit, actually made the final stop, and he picked up about four yards on the play. He'll bring up fourth down and six with 4.55 to go. And decision time for Virginia Tech. They're down 13 to nothing. Frank Beamer's thoughts are, hey, let's go for it. But Will Fuhrer says, wait a minute, let's talk about it. I want to make sure that if we're going for it, we're all going for the right thing. 4.50 to play here in the third quarter. And we're going to return with more right after these messages, this time from your local stations on the Virginia Tech Football Network. Thirteen nothing, Clemson. Third quarter, 4:50 to go. The decision's been made by Frank Beamer. Punt the ball. I think it's a great decision. I think there's plenty of time in this football game, and uh, here they're going to get great field position. Inside the 10-yard line, close to the seven, as Basha hangs it up. 30-yard punt for Basha, but it's not the yardage on that one that does the damage. It's where he put it. Again. The Clemson Tigers, well, really designs on a national championship this year, I guess especially coming off that win last week against Florida State. After tonight, they're into ACC with Maryland, Duke, and Virginia. But Maryland and Virginia are both at home. Then they follow that with Georgia Tech, State, and Wake Forest at home before they go to North Carolina, and then that traditional rivalry, of course, with South Carolina. Clemson in tight quarters. They're going to do what they do best in Henderson. We'll bring it out close to the 10-yard line. Brian Campbell, the defensive right tackle, had 12 tackles last week against South Carolina. He's got three sacks in that game as well. He has played so very, very well. Well, he's been a key man. I mean, in a wide tackle six defense, you need two super inside tackles. Tech lost one through uh, uh, great problems. They got Scott Hills, a great one. This young man walked on and has just played super. It was a great run by McFadden, but I want to tell you something. He just got a great block as well over there. Lassiter had to make the stop, but they had one of the takedown blocks across the way, one of the knockdowns. Watch it on the corner. This is what Danny Ford talks about, the knockdown blocks. Watch one right there. Got some help on footing, but Jerome Williams, the tight end, threw one for him. Well, not only Jerome Williams, but also uh, I believe that was uh, Bruce Batten, Bratton in there and uh, and the guard, Jeb Flush. Take a look at it again. 24 yards, some pressure on Morocco, but he trying to worm his way out of this one, and down he goes at the 34-yard line. That'll be uh, no gain on the play. Sean Lucas over there got some help, but Lucas was the first man to get over there. Brian Campbell was coming again for Virginia Tech. 3.22 to play in our third quarter. Clemson leads 13 to nothing on an Allen touchdown and two Gardaki field goals. That was a big play by McFadden. Well, that's 20, that's a big of 20 yards as it's he's Doug, picked up prior this season. Doug Clemson really out of the hole. Here's that pitch sweep coming up. Here's Henderson, tries to turn it outside. Russell's the first man to get there, and then Leslie Bailey comes along as well. But Henderson comes out close to the 40-yard line. This will bring up a big third down play in this drive for the Clemson Tigers. Fields goes out and Williams comes in now at tight end for the Tigers. Thomas is in at flanker. It's third down, about five yards to go. Here's the handoff to the fullback. Tech is there. Number 97, Al Chambly, I believe is the man that made the first hit, but then a lot of maroon jerseys came along as well. Sean Lucas getting off of that stack. 
Again, this crowd has uh, shown a lot of appreciation of Tech defense. Stephen Holloway was also in there playing at the left tackle position, place a hill. But it's fourth down and about three yards to go, and Gardaki is going to punt it away. Five punts already in this game for Gardaki with his long one being 42, and here comes some pressure. Picked up well, and he just nailed one. That ball is not going to get to the end zone. I don't believe it's going to get about one foot line. No, they say it went in. Oh, what a break. The ball went into the end zone at the last moment. It started to pick up some speed. A 59-yard punt for Chris Skardaki with 1.37 to go in the third quarter. And we're coming back with Clemson leading 13 to nothing. The ball's out at the 20. Virginia Tech with a first and 10 on their 20. And Fuhr is going to throw it short. Trying to get it to Sturdivant up at about the 37-yard line. Let's go back to the 59-yard punt for a moment here, Tom. The ball looked like it was very close to going into the end zone. In fact, to me, from here, it looked like maybe Clemson has stopped it at about the one-foot line. But what happens on a play like that? Well, a youngster stopped it you know, outside the end zone, actually downed it. But the momentum of the ball, if it's a judgment call, if it looks like the momentum of the ball, Kerr and the players you know, go in the end zone together, it's going to be a rule to touchback. Over the middle, they try to go to McCall. Pressure was really on up the middle against Fuhr, and he had to throw it just a little bit too soon, and it was out in front of McCall. And I think it was Davis in there that had the pressure on for Clemson. David Davis, who was a six-foot, 286-pound middle guard, a sophomore from Eastover, South Carolina, making the pressure on Fuhr that made him throw it just a little bit quicker than he wanted to. Clemson's getting good pressure here on, on the Fuhr. They have the entire game. They try the draw, but nothing going there. He gets it back to the line of scrimmage, and that was a quick down and out for Virginia Tech with 1.17 to go in the quarter. They didn't get anything done that time, and now they, the Clemson defense feeling their oats a little bit, trying to get their fans in orange across the way involved if they really need to help. Those folks have been involved the whole game. They love their Tigers, and they come 6,000 strong here to Blacksburg to support them. Bauschu with his sixth punt. He gets this one. He hits it really well. Down at about the 40. That's locked. Good coverage here by Virginia Tech, and he's going nowhere. Bauschu with a great, great punt. Bobby Martin was the first man down there, but also number 80 was getting down there, too, and that's Brian McCall, the tight end. Well, that was great coverage. It was a clinic coverage. 42-yard punt here, Tom. Watch, everybody's in their lane. Perfect coverage. We've got every lane covered. No place for Lot to go. Forty-three seconds to play in the third quarter. Clemson 13 and Virginia Tech nothing. It's been a heck of a football game. The two defenses that we talked about earlier. Oh, Allen wants to throw, and he may have a man. He does! You've got to credit two people that time. Cooper was out flying, and Terry Allen absolutely was stuffed when he threw the ball and was right on the numbers of Cooper. 66 yards. I mentioned earlier that they would probably take advantage sooner or later of uh, the aggressiveness of Damian Russell leaving that safety position, come behind him with a post. What better way to do it with a halfback pass? He's going to read run. They beat the, half, the defensive halfback inside. It's a touchdown for Clemson. Beautiful call. And Gardaki will attempt the extra point. Morocco will hold with 34 seconds to play. It's now a 20 to nothing football game. The Clemson Tigers with the big play tonight. The Clemson Tiger fans, they were asked to get into it. They're enjoying it now. They had their own ruski on that one. And of course, that's one of those things after Florida State a year ago. They'll here's, remember. Here's the replay. There's nobody inside. There's no safety. That's defensive halfback trying to make the play. He beats him on a post pattern. It's a beautiful call and a halfback pass. Usually on a halfback pass, you try to beat the corner that's coming up. In this game, Tech's been playing with an eight-man defensive front, and the safety's the ninth man. Damian Russell's been all over the field making all kinds of tackles. It's a great game plan, but Clemson 
uh, smart coaching on Clemson's part, took advantage of it and, uh, and, and struck for the touchdown. Well done, and Terry Allen does more than just run the football. One play, 66 yards, took him only nine seconds to do it. Cooper, we told you, was the big catch man in this offense. Doesn't catch that many, but he catches them for lots of yardage, and that kind right there doesn't hurt it any. That's not going to hurt his average, and I think he has the highest average per right. catch in Clemson history, 28-plus, 66 yards in one catch. Is certainly, it's probably up close to 30 now. 20 to nothing. The Clemson Tigers have the lead. Four catches today for Cooper. Now a total of 88 yards. About that 20 average that he looks for. Kubu gets it off, and here's Marcus Michael. Oh, he's got a good block to the outside. He may go all the way. Kubu, a big hit. That was a quick win. Michael is going to win it. Touchdown tech, 93 yards. Marcus Michael. That answers it in a hurry. Absolutely beautiful. Boy, Start to react. That time they came with a sideline return and broke it for the TD. Beautiful. Let's adjust the yardage. I think it's going to come out to be officially 90. I think he took it at the 10 yard line. But what a little hip fake he gave Kubu the kicker. Remember earlier, Kubu saved one when they were trying to break it to the outside. This time he couldn't as he went for the fake by Marcus Michael. And here's Thomas to try to add the extra point. He does. It's a 20 to seven ball game. Not over yet, folks. That might be the dash of salt that they need with 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. I know you'll want to see this one again, especially if you're a tech fan, huh? Exactly, 90 yards, hit it on the butt, Jim. Watch him work to the left side. Got some great blocks there, a double team on the out man. I'm not too sure who did it. The kicker falls down, and it's a foot race to the end zone. Nine take another look at it. Watch the double team to the outside. It uh, sets this thing up. Clemson was a little bit bunched up also in the inside in their coverage and that lane opened up. I can see that blocking develop here. See Clemson's coming inside. There's the double team right there. Now it's a foot race. That's Kenzel Johnson won. Now O'Neal gets in the race. But Michael's got too much speed. That's something else. Yeah, we've had, we're having ourselves quite a night here. That's exciting football, folks, on two consecutive plays. Clemson comes up with the option pass from Allen to Gary Cooper, and then you come right back on the ensuing kickoff and go 90 yards touchdown. We just had 156 <laughs> yards of plays in two touches of the ball. Michael, just a sophomore, Mr. Excitement, 5'10", 179 pounder. You folks down in Newport News can celebrate 27 ball game. Oh, an onside kick try, and it may not go 10. It yes, did. it does. I think it went 10, and Clemson backed off of it. And Virginia Tech's going to get the football. Oh, that's a great play. Where did the Tigers go? That had Clemson completely full. That front line was back, took the line off the ball and ran out of that neutral zone with their back to it. That, there was not a Clemson jersey around. They didn't even see it happen. There it goes. Has to go 10. It does. Yes, sir. Credit Scott Friend, number 30, because Scott Friend, had, the young man that had the presence of mind to let the ball take those final two turns. Now, how tough is that on a nervous system? You're a young man out there saying, two more times, ball. There's two more, and we got it. There's 50,000 people in the state who never thought it was going to get there. Got to love this kind of football, and I'll tell you what. They've been, oh, look at this. Take that. Kennedy wants to throw. Almost intercepted. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Frank Beamer is tearing every page out of the playbook he can find to beat this Clemson team. Well, that was, again, uh, give uh, credit to Tech special teams here all night long. That kickoff was obviously done through film study. They watched that Clemson front five and just noticed it. You know, before the, the youngster will kick the ball, they, they're turning their back in that neutral zone to run back and set up their block. 
Danny Ford, not a happy man across the way. He'll have some words about his special teams again this week. Pure pressure. Uh oh, that's Kirkland. He's going to go all the way. What kind of games this turned into? 47 yards for Vaughn Kirkland off of a tip ball into the end zone. And that quickly, Omo can turn on you. Wow, we've had some action here in the last. Last 30 seconds of the, of the third quarter. Pure looked like he was hit. He had a man open out in the right flat. It looked like he got bumped or hit in the last second. Kirkland was the man on the spot there. Sophomore out of Lamar, South Carolina. Went the 47 yards for the touchdown. They had a 73-yard return from Wayne Simmons last week against Florida State. Just when the Seminoles were looking to come back. And Gardaki's got another one. And it's 27 to seven with the Clemson Tigers leading Virginia Tech. And uh, boys will be boys. We had a little bit of a problem after the extra point. But cooler heads prevailed. And now you can see what happened here to little Pure. Boot route. Uh, well, it looks like he just tried to loft it and tried a little bit of a touch pass. I don't know if he got hit or not, but uh, he lofted it to the wrong color jersey there. I'm not so sure that it was an Otis Moore, number 81, perhaps, that got his hand on the football. Otis Moore, the left tackle, may have gotten his hand on the football. Let's see him going after it. Oh, yeah, right there. Yep, that does the turnover. Uh, bumped his arm. Otis Moore gets an assist on the play. And Kirkland knows what to do after he catches the football. Well, when you have that, you're constantly putting that kind of pressure and you have that much speed on defense, you're going to make things happen. And that's what Clemson's done today. That's uh, their third turnover. And uh, two of them have uh, led directly to touchdowns. One on the interception, the other fumble that they took in on the, on the option. Well, for the most part, their offense has come off of their opportunistic defense in this game with two seconds to play in the third quarter. And John Kubu, the 5'11 junior from Anderson, South Carolina, gets set to boot it again, and he says, hey, guys, I'm not a tackler. Still want to let me back, leave me back here alone. This is Michael again. He's still got to be tired. Michael looking for help comes up the middle this time. A lot of white jerseys are there as he comes across the 20-yard line, and that will be the final play of this, the third quarter of action. And what a wild final 30 seconds we had in this one. We go into the final 15 minutes, Clemson 27 and Virginia Tech 7. We'll be right back. Hope you had time to catch your breath from that wild and woolly third quarter, 27 to 7. Here's a look at your third quarter stats in this one. Clemson 5 to 2 in first downs. Rushing yardage, they continue with a big advantage. Passing advantage, the 66 yards all in the one play, Tom. And total offense, 140 to 34 in the third quarter. Big quarter, Clemson. First and 10 at the 31-yard line, Tech. Fewer is now in a throwing mode. Delivers it to the outside. He's got his tight end out there, Greg Daniels, who makes another catch. The sophomore from Hopewell, Virginia, has 15 yards and a Virginia Tech first down. We have to credit some people, Tom, once in a while. And there's a guy that sits up here with us that is a tremendous help. Tony Britt, our statistician, comes up with some marvelous things. Three of the last four kickoff returns for touchdowns against Clemson have been by Virginia Tech. That is tremendous. Yeah, Tony does a great job. Here's Fuhrer. Michael, they want him one-on-one, -on -one and he can't shake this time as Henderson is there to make the stop, but he gets maybe seven yards on the play. Also, Kenzel Jackson, number 13 for the Clemson Tigers, over. I guess you're wondering who did it. Larry Fallon in 1978, 92 yards. John Jeffries, 92 yards in 87, and... Michael with a 90-yard run here. Eight yards on the play. It's second down and two, Virginia Tech. They're moving the football at the Clemson 47-yard line. Remember, Jeffrey's not playing in this game. They're great tailback. Here's Michael for 5'9". Can he run the football, folks? He's a tough 5'9", 175-pounder. Kenzel Jackson makes the stop on Vaughn Hebron. Out of Baltimore, Maryland. Fort. This youngster's played a lot of snaps, but watch him uh, shake the tackle right there and make the first down. He, he can break tackles. This kid's going to be a great one. 
He's really coming into zone. Look for a Fuhrer to pass right in this play. Don't go home, to, uh, Tech fans. You're going to see uh, a lot of activity. Oh, what a great move on the ball, but a great catch over there as well. Fuhrer really put it on the money to his flanker, Nick Cullen, the junior out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Arlington Nunn made a great move on the ball, didn't get it, and Tech gets 17 yards. That's great concentration because what... Boy, I'll tell you what, Arlington Nunn really came flying by, almost had it. Yes, he did, and in fact, uh, he almost had the interception before that ball was drilled in there in a perfect spot by Will Fuhrer. Like I say, he's going to put the ball up here. He's going to have all kinds of passing records before he's finished. That's a sophomore. They work it to have not much chance that time. Just a lot of white jerseys along that line of scrimmage in there. Otis Moore is there for one. Boone is getting up off of the bottom of the stack. Otis Moore is one of those big tackles. Ed McDaniel was the first man to get to him for Clemson. That's a loss of a yard on the play. Second down and 11 for Tech at the 27-yard line of the Tigers. Fewer with a quick release to about the 23-yard line, and down goes Brian McCall. He had absolutely no time. Somebody, uh, that was uh, breaking in there for Clemson. I couldn't catch the, the defender. Jim, but uh, some some in the defensive line there broke through uh, very clean, and Fierce got a quick release. Well, you can see right here who it is. It's the guy right okay, in the middle. There's Bodine. Bodine. Boy, look how quick he is. But also the release of Fierce's ability to set up and, and release the ball quickly eliminates a lot of sacks. It's third down and eight for Virginia Tech. Boy, the center with Bodine as quick as he has got his hands full. That's going to be a nightmare. Here's Fox. Look at those linebackers close it down as he went across the 25-yard line. And the linebackers that time, one of them had him picked up man-to-man -man because they had a blitz from the outside. Both backers uh, were coming, so they were picked man-to-man -man coverage with the linebackers on the back, so on the draw play, they were just sitting in the hole ready to make the play. And that was McDaniel, 223-pound sophomore out of Batesburg, South Carolina. Had 104 tackles last year as a junior 14 against Oklahoma. We've got timeout on the field. We'll return with more after these messages from your local station. This is the Virginia Tech Football Network. Well, that tells the story right there. We're in the fourth quarter, 11.35 to go. And the Clemson Tigers, 27-7 lead right here. And Virginia Tech is going to go for it on fourth down. The ball at the 22-yard line. On the first possession of the game, Virginia Tech went for and made a fourth down conversion. It is fourth and eight. And Fewer's got time momentarily. Throws it. Out of bounds, trying to go to Myron Richardson, but really the coverage was there. And I think what happened was Jerome Henderson came over from his left quarterback and really kind of stepped into the seam. And it was either throw it to Henderson and watch him run 78 yards or throw it out of bounds. Yeah, that was uh, just a well, well covered, uh, good defensive job by Clemson. There was just nothing there. But on fourth and eight, he's got to try to force it in there. And that's exactly what he tried to do. There's Fears back up on the sideline. Cam Young, the young man, or uh, fifth year man from uh, uh, up the road here of Salem. He's probably one of the finest backup quarterbacks you're going to find. He can throw it too. Clemson's going to keep it on the ground right now with a 20 point lead. And Henderson, out of the tailback slot, gets the call. And Brian Campbell makes the stop. Number 90, Mark. On the dual tackle. Cooper is going to go out. Thomas is in, and Chip Davis is also in at a wide receiver spot as Danny Ford shuffles in the wide receivers now. Henderson and McFadden are in the backfield, and Henderson will dot the eye behind Morocco, the quarterback, who's been all the way. This is McFadden. Not very much over there on the left side. First man to get to him was Brian Campbell again. Well, Clemson just strong fundamentally. I mean, they stay at the same game plan, the same plays. They just keep pounding and pounding and pounding. And uh, 
you know, Tech has every reason to work in the world to be totally worn down, but they're making Clemson also pay for every yard they get. Danny Ford. There he is down on one knee. I told you before the game was over, you know, he starts out squatting, but I think he, that gets tired, so he gets down on one knee. And that's third down and short right now. About two to go. Now he's on all fours well, over there. You can't see it. Oh, oh, they tried to go to yeah. McFadden, and even Danny's cheerleading that time didn't help. Oh, we got two markers on the play, but they're way back upfield at about midfield. So I don't know what the call was. And we'll have to sort this one out. That was a great hit by Herdman. Darwin Herdman. Herdman has really played well. This is going against Tech. Right there. Mm. I mean, that's a load. That's McFadden. And he's uh, meeting one-on-one. -on -one. There's a look at Herdman, who's from right here in Blacksburg. But this is a big one. Illegal participation? Yep. Again, they may have 12 on the field. That's what we were talking about earlier. It's easy to play defense with 12. That's uh, it, Everything draws up pretty good defensively. Boy, I tell you what, how tough is that after you've just made a big third down hit? Clemson would have had to punt the football. Now they get a 15-yard penalty. They've got great field position, and you got to stay out there and play against these guys some more. You won't see Danny Ford throw it much now. Great Jeez. tackle that time. Oh, did, boy, did Randy Cockrell get up and put a licking on him that time. Henderson trying to get outside. I love the way that youngster tackles. I mean, he just makes some clean, crisp hits. But you're really strong. He's one of the Iron Hokies that really spends time in the weight room, and I think you saw it on that. Watch, he cuts back, and that's what linebackers got to fill that seam when they cut back. There he is. Keeps his feet moving. Picture tackle. We saw one of those two weeks ago by, by Cockrell. Didn't stop Henderson from getting three at second and seven. They tried up the middle again. Short yardage there. Bobby Martin is there on the stop. Also, Bobby Martin, Brian Campbell, a lot of the maroon jerseys. It'll be a third down, about five yards to go for the first down. Nine minutes to play in our football game, and Clemson up 27 to seven in one of those football games that had a wild and woolly third quarter finish, and it just doesn't seem like it's a 20-point lead by the Clemson Tigers. Look at that line get off the ball, and they get a first down. That's McFadden. Uh, that's about the third time tonight, Jim, that they've gone to the fullback on a third and five, third and four situation. And I think they're running that option and uh, loosening up the defensive line. And, you know, they've got to cover the perimeter in that situation. They're giving it to a strong man like McFadden. He can pick up five yards. It's a good call. Good read by the quarterback. Well, McFadden obviously likes to play against Virginia Tech two years ago, 226 yards on the ground. I think I that time he was playing tailback. I he's suspect he's close to 100 tonight. There they go again. Across the 40 to about the 37-yard line goes McFadden. But he's going to be one tired youngster. He'll be sleeping on the plane on the way back. Witten and uh, Bobby Martin. Bobby Martin's going to be a tired young man, too. He's had a heck of a game. At least we've called his name a lot. And there, McFadden's going to get a rest. Second down and seven. Three-yard pickup for Wesley. Junior Hall, a 229-pound red redshirt freshman from Gastonia in the lineup. Boy, Tech did a good job. You talk about doing a good job to the uh, outside. And that's Terry Allen. Didn't have a chance. Al Chambly, the first man to get out there and then got help. Well, the whole left side of the defense line, the Tech just really, look at, doggone, look at Cockrell take on the fullback. They just absolutely are attacking and taking on the blockers with, you know, aggressiveness and uh, getting after them. Another minus yardage situation for Terry Allen, too. He lost a couple. They get third down and let's call it nine yards to go. A long nine for Clemson. See if Morocco will put it up. Not, not with a 20-point lead. Allen. 
Still about the 37. The maroon jerseys are there again. And you got to take your hats off to this defensive team for Virginia Tech. They've been out there a while now, and they have really played well. Bringing up fourth down for Clemson, and Danny Ford's going to discuss this. What are we going to try now with a 20-point lead? He certainly has lots of options. He's going to take a delay a game right now, I think. He's just going to let the clock run down, take a five-yard penalty, and uh, give Gardaki a little bit more room to work with. That's exactly right. But uh, hats off to Tech. I mean, are they hanging tough? I mean, both teams. I mean, Clemson's offense is just going to run after you. They're going to pound you. And Tech's taking the pound and dished it right back. And it's kind of like two prize fighters in the ring. Both teams can hardly get off the field. Uh, you watched Allen. You watched McFadden. You know, they're tired. They're physically, they've been hit. And so the, and the Tech defense has also stayed in there and hung in there with the challenge. Good football. So Gardaki will kick it, try to put it down to the end zone. And oh, boy, he knocked it out of bounds. Did he get a right turn on that one at about the four-yard line? Is he so a, sweet. He may have radar on that thing, Jim. 6.09 to play in our football game. Clemson 27, Virginia Tech 7. And we'll be back for the final 6.09 in a moment. You know, you hear golfers talk about their golf course management when they're out there and playing well. How about clock management by Danny Ford, his coaching staff and team? 6.09 to play here in the game. That drive for Clemson, while it resulted nothing but the ball in the four-yard line, started at 11.31. They used five minutes and 22 seconds of the clock. Didn't mean anything as far as score goes because they didn't need another one. They got enough to win. Here's Fuhr trying to run out of trouble and steps out at about the 11-yard line. Kenzel Jackson on his way over there to throw him out of bounds. A pickup of about seven yards for Will Fuhr, but the Clemson defense did their job. But they offensively did their job too, Tom, because they knew they didn't need any more points. But they had to take the time away from Virginia Tech. They just didn't want anything bad to happen to them. That's why Clemson wins football games. No, that's exactly right. Just a... There's ball control, grind it out, go after him with your bread and butter stuff, and that's what wins for him. Defense and a good, strong running game. Actually, their offense is a defense in itself. Like you mentioned, it takes time off the clock, controls the ball, and doesn't turn it over. That's what helps make Fewer a great defense. Backside pressure and throws it. Oh, just came up about a step short trying to hit Marcus Michael. Fewer thrown out of a lot of pressure back there, and I think that shows the arm strength because he had to throw it off the back of his back foot while he was on the move and still just about came up short about a yard, 20 yards downfield. He's a, he's a very impressive young man. He's had a good night tonight, and uh, again, this is his third ball game of this season. He's, he's much improved, 148 yards, uh, a, a little below his last two games, but there's uh, plenty of time left. It's tough to keep up what he's done the last two games, two games over 200 yards passing. Here's Fjord. Oh, in traffic. He was on target, but that would have been a tough catch for anyone. He was trying to get it to Daniel out at about the 38, 20-yard line, rather. Well, that again shows you how that Clemson defense can, uh, that's the Tyrone uh, Mozan, how they can react to the ball and squeeze the seams. Clemson linebackers play the pass so well. He's a strong safety who's in part of the underneath coverage. Well, if he doesn't look at all those uh, white jerseys around the ball. If he catches it on the first touch, he's probably got it, but the ball kind of batted off of his hand, so Basha has to kick it away. That's O'Neal at the 46, running laterally. McCall made a hit, but O'Neal does a great job of keeping his feet, getting it up to the 40-yard line, and he turns a 35-yard punt into a six-yard return before Cockrell and Herdman get to him. 5.36 to go on our game. Clemson leads it by 20. We're coming right back. Well, that's Frank Beamer along the sidelines. He's uh, down a little bit right now, but boy, what a job he had. Is that a son behind I him? I think it is, John, Jim. Right. There's Cameron into the ball game. Welcome. Bergman on the stop as he got pressure from the backside. And Deshaun Cameron in now for his first snap of this football game. Heck of a job by Herdman right here in Blacksburg. He's, uh, his father's a professor here at uh, Virginia Tech. 
Second and 14 for a four-yard loss. Cameron, a sophomore from LaGrange, Georgia, on the draw. Here they come. Jerome Preston, the first man to get to him. He's just a freshman, 6'4", 263, Martinsville, Virginia, down at Magna Vista High School, where he played quarterback last year. But that was an awesome sight if you were looking across the line at that kid playing quarterback. He gets back, what, about six? He's a good athlete, and that, you know, one thing, you recruit uh, quality quarterbacks, typically you recruit good athletes, and they can play different spots. This one just happens to be 6'4", 263, and so he can play a lot of spots. Third down and seven for the Tigers. Oops, can't get it outside as they try to turn it to the outside. Charlie James into that backfield now for the Clemson Tigers. Loss of three on the play at that time for James, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. And Gardaki is going to have to come back in again. Four minutes, and the clock is running here at Lane Stadium. Next week, the Temple Owls right here for Virginia Tech. It's a noontime kickoff, and we'll have all the action for you here along our Telesport Network line. And we hope that you'll join us 12 noon next Saturday afternoon. Clemson's going to take another delay of game call. Try to get more room for Gardaki to hit that. You'd hate to call it a little poocher punt from here, but yeah, for Gardaki, that's about what it amounts to. Since the end of the third quarter, the Clemson Tigers have been very much in control of this football game, but Tech has played them tough. This guy's good, isn't he? Gee, yeah. Richardson lets it go, but this time he the Virginia Tech roll into the end zone. Had the wrong bounce on it that time, but 45-yard punt for Gardaki. And Clemson's lead is 20 with three and a half minutes to go in the game. We'll return with more after these messages from your local stations. This is the Virginia Tech Football Network. Jim Forrest, Tom Lansittle back with you. Maurice Spencer is along the sidelines. Let's go to the field for the Steel Sideline update. Jim. Okay. Jim, we got a last one down. He took the place of Roger Brown in the last cornerback series. He's had a tough time. He was sucked up on a too deep coverage. He has a deep responsibilities and couldn't make the play. Misjudgment. That's how they got the touchdown on the halfback pass. Back to you. 3.33 to go in this football game, and we're going to get wholesale substitutions now. Frank Beamer has made some changes. We've got Bennett into the ball game at receiver. He comes to the near side. New quarterback is Cam Young, the senior from Salem, Virginia, into the lineup. It's Kennedy going in motion, and Young wants to throw it, and he can do that. That's McCall, the tight end on the reception, out across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. A lot of folks, of course, we'd like to thank at this time of the football game that really have helped make our jobs a lot easier. For the Clemson Tigers, so the Sports Information Department, Bob Bradley, who retires after so many wonderful years at the end of this month, and Tim Beret, the man who takes over as Sports Information Director, and for Tech, thanks Jack Williams, and Dave Smith, for all of your help. It is a second down and about four to go for Cam Young and his Hokies. And they've got themselves a That's Mark Point Dexter. He's third. Mark Poindexter, 13th fullback. And he's the first carry of the year for Mark Poindexter. There's a couple other youngsters in there. Uh, Chris Matheny is in there uh, also for the first time this year. Uh, I believe Jim Offensive Lyman's worked himself into two deep. I believe Jason Williams, number 67. We don't have some of these kids on our two deep. We're going to be... Well, Point Poindexter is a red shirt freshman. Here's Cam Young looking to throw the football. And the rollout's got some room to run it, and he can. Get down, Cam. You learn something in five years, and that's get out of the way. 2.24 to go, but Young's got himself another first down after picking up 17 yards on that play. In the booth again, Tony Britt, our statistician, many, many thanks to. And uh, Dan Forrest, who is helping us with our spotting up here. Thanks, guys, for a good job. Good protection by the line. Young gets out on the perimeter. It's a, they're playing a soft, almost prevent defense. 
So he takes the opportunity and uh, takes the corner. Another first down for Tech. Cam Young throws it on the corner. Oh, my goodness. Luzon made a big, big hit out there on the corner. Now, that wasn't Luzon. Let's give credit. Number 14 for the Clemson Tigers in the lineup is Tony Mooney makes the hit. Oh, my, what a hit. We're going to watch this uh, again, a little seam route, and he reacts from his uh, cornerback position. Man, does he make the hit. Mm. It's a perfect tackle. And nearly an interception as well. 151 to go in the game. And I'll tell you something, Cam Young had it on the numbers. But that's one Kennedy will remember. Second and 10. Look out. Hebron, look out on the other end of this one. Gets quick. He's gone to hurry up offense. Getting his team on the ball. Shane Scott was the man that made the stop on the play, and we've got an injury now for the Tigers across the way. Wayne Harps, number 16.